All right, everybody, welcome to our first webinar of 2021. Uh, I hope it's been a great start to 2021 for all of you. Uh, nice to be in a fresh new year. And uh, after a uh, crazy 2020, we're very excited to be back and uh, get started with our first webinar, New Year's Resolutions to help you crush 2021 and all of your goals and all of your objectives. And of course, as usual, we'll be focusing a lot on digital. So let's get started today. I'm hoping this is a good warm up for all of you, something inspiring to get you going if you're still feeling a little sluggish after 2020. Uh, I know I'm feeling good, and uh, hopefully uh, some of the ideas I share with you today will get you going. Well, a little bit of inspiration before we get into it. Always New Year's is a good time to sort of refresh and rethink things and approaching the new year with resolve to find the opportunities hidden in each, each new day is a great way to look at things. Uh, and, you know, while there is still a lot of turmoil out there and continued you know, just, you know, un uncertainty. Uh, I'm always trying to avoid overused words and buzzwords, but it is uncertain. But, you know, within there, there is some opportunities. There is some opportunities for our friends out there in the broadcast industry, and we're hoping we can share some of them today with you. As always, my name is Eric. I am your host for today. I head up sales and marketing here at SoCast. Uh, and uh, as always, I hope you always take a few nuggets away. You can always email me. I'll give you my email at the end of the presentation. So you can always email me and yell at me if you didn't like it or give me feedback or, or tell me you did like it. Um, you can always tweet about us at SoCast and hashtag digital dollars and feel free using the uh, go to webinar sidebar there we do have my good friend shay on the moderation panel addressing any questions we will address them uh you know definitely for you uh as the you know hopefully as the webinar goes on but if you do have questions that we don't get to we will definitely get back to you and now a word from our sponsor so we here at SoCast are your sponsor, and our mission at SoCast is to make digital growth easy for broadcasters. Uh, a few notes to note there. One, our platforms and solutions are built exclusively to help radio broadcasters navigate the digital era and make it easy to both grow your digital audience as well as your digital revenue. We have an integrated cloud-based content management and advertising platform built exclusively for radio broadcasters. And we can help you with all elements of your digital from everything from website content management to mobile apps, to advanced digital advertising solutions. We can offer Alexa voice skills, social relationship management. And of course, we're also happy to act as a digital consultant for you to help you make sure not only are you getting the best from our platform, but that you're optimizing and taking advantage of all the opportunities that digital affords radio broadcasters in this day and age. We have th uh, over 1,300 radio stations who use us of all shapes and sizes, everything from owner-operated single station broadcasters uh, in small markets all the way up through large market enterprise level and every detail in between. So I'm sure we can help you. We have pricing solutions for everybody in 2020 to help or 2021 to help everybody get through uh, the pandemic and just to get you set up for a great strong year with digital. Um, and uh, now we'll get into all the fun stuff. So another note of inspiration, what would be a resolutions webinar without some inspiration? And part of this is really, you know, a little bit of inspiration, but also to really set the tone for, for the webinar. Um, so really, if you're sort of just flying by the CD, your plants with digital, and you don't really have a vision, it really is just a dream. And if you're not actioning your plans, you're really just not going to make have any impact. Vision with, with action can change the world. So if you take one or two of the ideas we have here in this presentation and some of the resolutions and put them into action, we hope it will help maybe not change your world dramatically, but certainly have a solid impact to help you either grow your audience and connect more with them or really increase your digital revenue or ideally both. 
So what are the four resolutions to help crush 2021's goals that we're going to review today? Well, one, we want to talk about finding the right digital partner this year. We believe all of you, if you don't already have the partner like SoCast, please you know, let's talk about what you're looking for. And there's a couple of elements that we'll review in that. Number two, we wanna help you strengthen your digital presence. We've talked a lot about it last year in all of our webinars about going omni-channel. Next, we really wanna help you grow your revenue to represent greater than, a minimum of greater than 15% of all of your total revenue. That is a good milestone. Certainly we have partners that are blowing that out of the water and are in the, you know, the 25 to 35% and even a little higher. But, you know, the, the standard benchmark for those who are really looking to grow digital revenue is roughly about 15%. So we use that as a solid benchmark. And then we want to help you win the battle for local ears and eyes. And we'll talk more about that as we get into it. So, as we've talked about, one resolution is to ensure that you have the right digital partners. And, and I want to say that everybody knows people in the industry, but people are starting to consolidate their suppliers. And that goes across advertisers are looking to consolidate suppliers like radio broadcasters to provide them with more solutions. But you as operators should also be looking to consolidate everything or as many of your solutions that you need to manage digital, whether it's your digital advertising and your content management, websites, apps, social media, to fewer suppliers, it makes things so much easier. And we'll talk about why in this section in this regarding this resolution. The first thing to ask yourself is, does your team have the tools that they need to thrive in 2021? So a little checklist here for you to make sure is, do they have cloud-based digital tools to allow them to work remotely and work from home that will make it easy for them to manage the content on your websites, on your mobile apps, in your social media, and any other digital channels. Are they integrated and optimized for workflow so people only have a single sign-on? Is your platform flexible and does it support innovation? Or more importantly, is your partner continually updating the platform and making adding enhancements because we know digital changes at light speed and the trends that are happening you know with on demand content are are your partners also moving at that speed and helping you stay ahead of the curve do you have the control you need to make easy updates and publish content on your website. If you have to call your supplier to do that, other than obviously for support or help because you're unsure of how to do something or how to optimize something, but if you have to call them to make changes, that is not the most efficient way to do things. You can have an easy drag and drop solution that can make it easy with today's uh, modern technology and content management, you can have that. And when you're doing advertising campaigns, you should have uh, a solution that makes it easy to submit, uh, to submit propose, to request proposals, submit campaigns, etc. You want to obviously make sure your platform is stable and updated. Uh, you want to make sure that you, there is no dead air, so to speak, online for you yourself. And you also want to make it. Uh, have a platform that makes it easy to manage your owned and operated digital O and O is what that means owned and operated that is the display and video inventory that you can have on your websites and mobile apps as well as if you're doing any programmatic or ad or audience extension uh, type advertising solutions or any advanced digital um, services you really want to be able to manage that through the same back end so ask yourself, do you have these tools? Is your platform unified? Is it integrated? And is it easy to use? And do you have a partner that really innovates on it and keeps it up to date and keeps you ahead of the game? If you don't, then it's time to start looking for a new platform. Because really the integrated ecosystem is a really important thing to have. And a platform like SoCast, as an example, just within here that you can see, really bridges the gap between the two sides, the two fundamental sides of the radio broadcast business. If you break it down to the simplest terms, radio broadcasters put out content, of course, on air. That has always been the way you've done it, as well as online in web, mobile, app, social media voice skills, et cetera, all in an effort to grow your listenership and ratings. 
On the other side, you sell spots traditionally, and now you can sell a myriad of digital inventory as well. Everything from that owned and operated inventory, as well as being able to sell campaigns like G that, that include geofencing, targeted display, retargeting, etc. And through all of the channels, whether it's video, YouTube, over the top or connected TV, all of being able to offer a comprehensive ad solution and being able to manage, have your sales team manage this through the same backend that you manage your content, sys content system is a really efficient uh, way to manage everything. Really, if you can manage everything from one dashboard and manage all of your digital, social, your promotions, your website, your mobile app, the content on your player, and all your media, you are going to save yourself a ton of time and make it very easy to have a uniform look and feel across all of your digital brands. Your digital toolkit should make it easy to share content across all of the digital platforms and channels, whether you're publishing it out into web or onto your app or into social media, you should have one touch, one touch publishing where you're able to syndicate content out to all of those digital channels from the same back end. There is no reason why you need a platform to manage or need to go into Facebook natively to publish content or Twitter anymore. There are tools like SoCast, like other, other tools like Hootsuite, that will make that easy. So what are some of the benefits of an integrated SaaS software as a service solution, which means that it is cloud-based, that you can access it from any computer. As long as you have internet, you don't have, it, have to have it installed natively at your place, your location, your studio. You can just access it through any computer where you have an internet connection or mobile phone. Well, one, it simplifies digital content management from one dashboard. So it's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save your team a lot of effort, and it's going to increase the volume of activity they have to interact with your audience so they can continue to grow your digital audience. It will offer the flexibility to meet what is the new reality, which is a work from home needs. We know that both People like ourselves are working from home. I'm sitting in my bedroom right now, as well as a lot of you out there are working from home. Hopefully that will end soon, but even still, we'll talk about that trend a little bit more in a little while. It will allow you to maintain cross-channel brand consistency and control, so you'll have uniform looks between your websites, mobile apps, your social media content. A good solution also allows with user-based permissions, it encourages collaboration and contributions from everybody across your organization. And that will really help create more interaction, more content to drive up your page views, drive return traffic, and also mitigate having risk for having just one person potentially manage all of your digital. It also collects all your first party data on your P1s and listeners, the people who will be entering your contests online consistently, and the people who will actively engage with your, your insiders clubs or VIP clubs that you may have on your site. And you can have a centralized database and identify and reproduce success across that your entire organization. It will give you one throw to choke. So when it comes to service and support, you won't have to call multiple help desks or worry about any, you know, any of your suppliers sort of saying that's their fault, that's their fault. You'll really just have one person. And of course, it will allow you to make more money because you'll have an integrated advertising solution built into your platform as well. When you're looking for a programmatic ad partner, I provided this checklist of eight things to consider when selecting a programmatic partner. And when I'm speaking of programmatic, that would be a solution that enables you to go out and sell programmatic ad extension campaigns such as geofencing, retargeting, targeted display, etc. through all of the digital channels that are out there. Again, connected television or what's known as OTT over the top, like Roku and uh, you know Chromecast, etc. You want to understand what the pricing structure and is there an onboarding fee? What are they going to give you for that pricing? So is there a cost monthly or is it free and is it a rev share? Are you charged a monthly retainer or just a certain uh, percentage of the ad revenue? 
Does the platform offer access to higher quality multi-platform ad inventories, or are they just really putting you out on spam websites to drive uh, clicks and, 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 and really invaluable impressions? And what are their audience targeting capabilities and personalization capabilities? Can they look at IP addresses? Can they geo-target? Can they adjust the display of ads through day parts? And can they cap the frequency at which audience members will see the advertisement so they're not being inundated? What safety measures do they have implemented to tackle fraud? There are so many solutions out there. Everybody is selling this type of thing, but you want a platform and a partner that delivers strong anti-fraud technology baked into their solution. So you can make sure that you are delivering, delivering impactful impressions and great results for your advertisers so you can retain them and have them rec have them spend recurring budgets with you over the course of the year. You want to make sure that you're going to have the good technical support because so many of, uh, of our broadcast friends out there are still just learning how to go effectively sell digital. It's not to say all of you, I'm not insulting anybody, but still it's nice to have a partner that you can collaborate with both on technical support and through sa on sales enablement, which is the last point there. By sales enablement, we mean are they providing you with the tools, the proposals you need, or is that something you have to figure out on their own? Do they have a training or certification program to get your sales team and educate them on everything from how to sell digital, as well as understanding all the terms that are important when it comes to ad extension or programmatic ad technology? And do they have good reporting tools that's going to help your sales teams actually convert and again, retain some of your ad partners who may be doing this. Because if the reporting is weak, then you're likely not going to be able to prove the concept to your advertisers after they invest with you the first time. So another resolution, and we've talked about a lot this a lot, is radio really not needs to start thinking of themselves as omni-channel content producers, not just traditional on the air content producers. You really need to look at 2021 to strengthen your digital presence. Of course, having the right supplier and technology, resolution number one will help that. But really, we, we want to advocate that you should really be embracing radio everywhere. In today's day and age, audiences are expecting to find you where they want, when they want, and they want you to be in all of these channels so they can find your stream, they can find your content, uh, and they can find local news and information that is relevant to them. We mentioned it a little bit earlier, but with the number of employees permanently working uh, from home and that number, that trend continuing to increase early in 2020 and likely for the long haul as people are realizing that it's better work-life balance and that they don't need to have all of this face-to-face. -face. I can so many businesses out there are going to continue to allow people to work from home. Doesn't mean you won't be going back to offices and studios and things like that, but certainly the expectation is that even after the dust settles and in the second half of the year when things are much better, I remain very optimistic that that's going to happen in the next quarter or so, that people will still be working from home. So you need to be prepared to connect with your audience when they are working from home. Uh, really, it is important that uh, the transition to home offices. Um, you know, are going to be somewhat permanent or semi-permanent or at least a hybrid of that. And you need to have your content available online because people aren't going to be driving as much. So things like smart speakers are key in 2021 and beyond. Um, and AM, FM radio is really well supported by uh, Google and um, and and Alexa, Amazon Alexa. So it's really important that you have all of your uh, brands available through smart speakers as that has become sort of the new radio in home. And by 2020, it was uh, that fi about 50% of all searches were voice activated and over 50% of households in the US are expected to own a smart speaker by 2022. That number has actually increased slightly. Um, and I think that it's gonna be a bit higher by that point. Uh, mobile queries now are done more and more with search. 
So just getting into the search game and again, finding a partner who's investing in that and taking the time to figure out and keep you ahead of the curve is very, very important. More and more people have used voice search. More and more people are using smart speakers. Uh, and this is only, you know, this is a very, very important channel for radio to be involved in. It's also very important that broadcasters have a great sounding stream and that that stream is available, as I mentioned a number of times, on all of the digi digital devices that people are consuming content on today, whether it's a tablet, a mobile phone, on internet TVs, on wireless speaker systems, and of course on desktops as well. So radio, as we've told you in the past, it's important that you seize the day. It's You need to be streaming omni-channel on apps, smart speakers, on, on websites, 64% of 18 plus adults are saying that they listen to audio through their smartphones, and that is up by 65% from the previous where here. Again, 55% of US households will have smart speakers by 2022, so get in there now. Tablet use is up for streaming year over year by almost 50%. So, and also it's important that you make sure you're promoting it. Again, in order to have an effective strategy, you want to make sure your on-air content is mirroring and promoting your online content. And you can do that with appointment listening or listen to win contest and sharing announcements and then posting them on social, on your website, on your mobile app, using push notifications. You want to promote your stream in social media. Almost every one of your social posts should have a link back to your website for your own blogs or to your stream and or to your stream as well. You want to make sure that you have a means to interact with your audience one-to-one -one through digital, whether it's comments on your website or through a web form or it's on your social media. It's great to engage in conversation through these digital properties. The digital has essentially um, become another channel, much like you know the phone was so important to radio. So that's a really important thing for everybody to start thinking about in 2021. And you wanna use your digital tools to connect with your audience wherever and whenever they want. The next resolution, our third of four, is win the battle for local ears and eyes. And again, we believe that those omni-channel content strategies are key to growing listenership and engagement with your audience. We also do believe that local content publishers are starting to converge on the same audience. Radio is poised to dominate the local content and advertising market, and that is something that really needs to be embraced. That is that bit of that is one of the big pieces of hope for radio in 2021. The reality is, is that as newspapers continue to go the way of the dodo and disappear, that there is a vacuum created. And people are not just looking for you for your audio content anymore. Your websites and mobile apps can become the local community hub for, your, for that local re region's content. And so we have some really small market broadcasters that do a phenomenal job and have positioned their websites as that local community hub for all local content, whether it's classifieds or obituaries or buy and sells, et cetera, um, there is really a good, you know, a good opportunity for you to start taking advantage of it and start to capture some of the advertisers that print media in particular is losing. Again, digital programming should be very live and local, and your websites and mobile apps should be full of the localized content that people want, that they have traditionally gotten from the newspaper, now they are getting from you. And if you promote yourself as such, that is really uh, an amazing opportunity. So whether it's local news, school closures, event calendars, providing local blog content, top 10 things to do in the area this weekend, or you know, once kids go back to school, or where vaccination centers, those things are all really, really important because that can really drive a lot of traffic. If you're only resting on the curated content and the format of your brand, that won't be enough to really significantly grow your digital revenue. You can also um, have localized user-generated content, UGC, 
meaning you could have people submit, again, obituaries, a local funeral home can post obituaries on your website if you have the tools. You can have business directories. You can have schools submit closures or business submit closure alerts and things like that. You also want to have promotions to promote local businesses. You want to be able to send out push notifications to make and text messages to make people aware of uh, rele relevant events within the local environment. So local content still remains king and the omni-channel content strategies are key to growing listeners and engagement. And again, I talked a little bit about classifieds. One of our partners from Acadia Broadcasting uh, in Eastern Canada does an amazing job. This is actually a site from Northern Ontario, Canada. It's a town of about 15,000 in Dryden, Ontario that does significant monthly page views. They're able to monetize this site extremely well and they do a great job in taking local submissions and having sponsorable categories for that allows their sales team to go out and actually target specific advertisers that can be relevant to the segment. So if it's a automotive section, they can have a local body shop. If it's a real estate section, they can have a local real estate agent or maybe a contractor that may want to do it or a local, uh, you know, a local, uh, what do you call it? A, a wow a uh, interior designer to fluff the house before it goes to sale. But it's a great traffic driver to include things like this. And you can also do some cross-channel promotion with social media. Closures are also a big thing, whether it's church closures, business closures, school closures, etc. And again, these can all be sponsored. Obituaries in the smaller markets, uh, you know, is a big driver still for newspapers, one of the things keeping them alive, but you have the ability to provide that public service as well to your local communities. And I can tell you that for some of our partners, these drive a large amount of page views and can be monetized as well by targeting specific advertisers such as florists, such as uh, estate planners uh, and funeral homes as well. We already did talk a little bit about uh, closures and uh, businesses as well. There's also the opportunity for business directories. So you can promote local businesses and these can either be paid or not, but you do have the ability to um, offer this page on your website for shop local and to promote local businesses so uh, that people can be aware of different segments as well. Another great tool we've really seen a lot of traction in in 2020 and are expecting already we have a few partners that are planning on launching websites using our platform that are not radio specific brands, but really extension of their brands for their local community. I call them satellite brands, but what you can do is you can look to build out additional digital properties for highly targeted audience segments that you know have uh, an interest in where there may be a bit of a gap. I can give you two examples. One of our partners, Krista Media in Seattle, Washington, or in the, in the Washington region, does an all mom does blogging website and podcast site. Uh, so they have some local uh, mom, mother influencers that contribute to this. And this is a has a very strong, loyal following. Um, and uh, they are able to really target specific advertisers and increase the volume of display inventory that that they can offer. So something like this, or a local high school or varsity sports website, like I-70 Sports is another good example in Vandalia, Illinois. So these are great examples of the way you can start to think about extending your brands. A number of our partners have just come up with uh, doing portal sites that are almost like local newspaper sites, such as PA Now, our friends in Prince Albert uh, have PA Now, um, and it is just a not a radio site. It affiliates with the radio site. And a lot of the content is shared between the two, but it really provides them with a means at, to become that local content provider for the community. Again, just some examples of Qu Green Quinte, for example, just a more uh, from our friends in um, our friends at uh, Quinte Broadcasting. So great, great use of our of our platform to do something uh, with a green initiative. So a really good idea is, is looking into that because it really can provide a new digital destination for your local audiences as well as additional revenue opportunities.
Resolution number four is to really significantly grow your digital revenue in 2021. And we really wanna help you get there. So if you are looking for consultation or you need support, please let us know. If you already have a partner, make sure you're maximizing this with them because radio, this is actually just a quote. I had to put this in the webinar. I found this, this was from Inside Radio Today um, from um, Mike Kaplinski, uh, Director of Research at uh, Noble Capital Markets. This just came out today in Inside Radio. Radio may have one of the best revenue recovers, recoveries in the media space. Broadcasters that have digital podcasting and diversified op operations will perform better than the industry averages. So that is excellent news. Digital is a core component because digital ad revenue is expected to grow by about 17% next year, but, or sorry, revenue is expected to rebound by about 17% next year. But really after that, it's going to stay reasonably flat. This is only traditional spot revenue and traditional revenue. Obviously, that is there's not going to be a lot of growth in what you sell traditionally. But there is expected, according to multiple analysts, multiple uh, industry insiders, including Gordon Burrell, that local advertising's big dollar shift in 2021 is happening. And that there is going to be a big shift from taking from traditional media spends and shifting it into digital. So you need to equip yourself with the tools and the technology to deliver advertising solutions that will help offset any loss of revenue, as well as to find new advertisers and get more share of wallet from your existing advertisers. The, I like the little box there. It says, though it's not as simple as a dollar for dollar exchange, the amounts leaving radio and TV cable are nearly identical to those forecasted to go to streaming forms of those media in 2021. So you do need to be prepared for that. And really, it is expected that after a very down year due to obvious reasons, advertisers in virtually every digital, every segment are going to spend their uh, increase, their spend in digital this year and for the foreseeable future. So you've probably seen this slide before if you've been on one of my webinars, but we stand by it and we believe that really it is the multi-platform campaigns that are really going to help you grow digital revenue in 2021 and beyond. So it's essential that you get active and your sales teams become educated on how to sell digital in conjunction because they are complementary. They are not uh, in competition with one another. In fact, digital can offset radio's declining traditional reach. If ratings are going down and your reach is reasonably finite, then digital is a way that you can continue to expand your reach and deliver that reach to your advertisers. And reach is seen as one of the most important and significant reasons why the shift to digital is happening. Another important thing is. Uh, local advertisers are looking to, like I said earlier, for you guys, you should be consolidating your suppliers. You can also, your advertisers are also to, looking to consolidate where they buy media from and where they buy their marketing from. And there's an opportunity that in 2021, it's going to drop uh, to just two. So you should be one of those because you have equity and trust built in those relationships with your ad partners and your trusted accounts. So being able to offer them a comprehensive digital solution that integrates both on air and digital together will help you significantly in 2021. And there is so much, there is so much inventory that you can sell or so many different solutions that you can sell. And we by no means recommend selling all of these things, but you do have your own owned and operated inventory on your website, which is probably the least lucrative of the three, but still a valuable offering if you have high traffic and as a value add to selling everything. So you can have that as just being your box ads, banner ads, video pre-rolls, and of course, sponsorship for contests and things like that are a great way because that bridges the gap between on air and online if you promote it both ways that you can really drive some traffic and lead generation for your advertisers. 
On the digital ad extension side, of course, you want to be able to offer things like geo-targeting, targeted display, retargeting, et cetera, um, and be able to offer it through all of the digital channels, whether it's social, again, OTT or connected TV, uh, whether it's you know just on all of the websites that the target audience for that advertiser visits. And of course, another area is being able to offer digital services, such as SEO, SEM, maybe video uh, production, paid search, even web design. So if your advertisers are looking for a web, uh, you know, web, uh, web design for their business, it's something that you could potentially offer and make digital revenue from. And you'll have a much stickier, happier, longer term client. So being able to offer ad extension or programmatic ad solutions, like we've mentioned, geotargeting, targeted display, et cetera, is essential because it will help your advertisers reach their digital, their audience through digital. And it will help you expand your reach so you can deliver more impressions and deliver more attributable foot traffic or results for them. And that is really the big value. So you can get more share of wallets and really lure in new advertisers as well. Programmatic ad extension leverages the latest technologies to effectively place your client advertisements on thousands of premium websites in front of their tar target buyer. And it will help you again, become your the local advertising leader in your market. If you're able to provide them a full marketing solution that encompasses your on air, as well as digital solutions. So that will lead to more money for you, getting more share of your advertisers' budgets, help you bring in new advertise to, advertisers to your stations, target specific advertisers with solutions proactively, and it will even allow you to target audiences and advertisers outside of your local range because digital is not necessarily subject to putting out ads in front of your only within your your locale i'll give you an example if you have a local resort in your in your community that may want to attract interested travelers from uh you know a 500 mile radius you can target those people outside of your local range using ad extension and again, most importantly, it will provide attributable, tangible results to share with your ad partners so you can retain them and get them um, spending money again and again. Let me give you an example of how ad extension works in action. And this is the simplest way I can sort of describe it. Most everybody here has been sort of either a subject to it or a victim of it, depending on how you look at it. But let's say I go to my favorite website, ESPN.com. Okay. And then the publisher puts that big banner ad up for sale on an auction in a programmatic ad exchange, meaning just programmatic means just it's a virtual ad exchange. The ad unit is auctioned off to competing advertisers in a virtual marketplace using, uh, using artificial intelligence and digital technology. The advertiser who bids the most wins the right to display and target their specific buyer persona. So for example, if at the top of the screen, as an example, I am a savvy customer experience director, the ad is delivered to the targeted persona. Based on my search history, my digital fingerprint, my social media activity, they have a good sense that I am a customer experience director. Maybe because I've searched like-minded products, maybe because I've been to their website before, maybe because I attended one of their webinars, et cetera. But now this organization, Somos, is targeting me and they have bid and purchased my impression knowing that I am on ESPN.com. The customer clicks on it, I wanna learn more, I wanna register for a demo or a register for their webinar. And of course that will ultimately lead for conversion. Ad extension really allows you to target the, the audience, the target buyer for that, for that advertiser. So if you know that there is a, if, the, if your advertiser is looking for a luxury car buyer and of specific demographic and behavioral interests, they the the ad that they will see on ESPN will be different than the ad I the IC and they will see a nice BMW ad placed in front of them. So that's some good illustration as how targeted display works. 
There's also geofencing and geotargeting. And this will allow you to target, put a radius around a specific location or specific geographic area. Again, this will also allow you to target outside of where your local reach is. So this is a very effective way for you to deliver coupons or loyalty incentives or to promote at event locations, whether it be a bridal show, a car show, once those come back, come back, et cetera, and drive traffic to specific advertisers. Retargeting allows you to, once somebody engages with an advertisement and clicks on it and visits the website, it will ensure that they that, that individual is followed around, I'm using air quotes, the internet on whatever site they visit. So if they visit, if they saw an ad for tickets for a play and they clicked on it, but they didn't fulfill it, they will then see that ad everywhere they go, regardless of the publisher. And we've all been subject to that where we may have looked up something and then all of a sudden we see that advertise an advertisement for that product or service or event uh, throughout our digital sort of day. So we do believe that traditional and digital advertising spending will rebound in 2021, which is great news, but digital will be the growth engine through the next few years. We believe that digital advertising industry uh, will focus on the following priorities, targeting around location, really focusing on multi-channel, specifically over the top or connected TV is a big opportunity. They'll be looking for attribution. So you really want tools that will allow you to provide trackable and measurable results for your advertisers so you can show them ROI. And again, as mentioned earlier, when you're looking for your partner, you want to make sure that they have fraud prevention and that they are transparent in providing you the results. We believe radio revenue growth will rely on selling multi-channel campaigns and, the, and your ability is going to be that you can capitalize on the existing relationships you have with your ad partners. Remember, wrapping up with a final, a final a note of inspiration for you, if you have a goal without a plan, it's just a wish. So I hope that some of this will work for you and you'll be able to take some of the, your goals and apply some of the plans I've provided to make it a reality for you in 2021. Again, my name's Eric. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. You can always email for me, to me, eric at socastdigital.com. Uh, you can book a demo with me. And the first five demos that get booked, and they get booked up pretty fast, so get on it, will receive 50% off our audience platform for the first year. So that is gigantic savings. It's our sort of first month webinar special. So get on that. If you're not a SoCast client and you're interested, please join us. Uh, for, ask us for a demo. And if you sign on with us, your first year will be reduced at 50% off. That's for the first five people who sign up for demos with us uh, between now and February 28th. Uh, and that is a very great offer. Uh, again, I also have some great digital checklist and content cheat sheets for you if you'd like to email me for those. And you can reach me at eric at socastdigital.com and check out our website at www.socastdigital.com as well. Once again, my name is Eric. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I look forward to all your feedback and we'll be having lots more of these. So we'll hope to see you again and again and again. Have yourself a great afternoon and a great rest of the week. Take care.